If you notice that you're dragging your toes when you're walking or possibly tripping over your own feet, if so, it could put you at an increased risk for falling. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'll share three simple tips that you can use to prevent tripping over your own feet so that you can walk more safely. Now, the first thing you need to determine is why you're tripping over your feet in the first place. It could be something as simple as just a learned walking habit. It may be due to stiffness in your calves or weakness in a muscle called your tibialis anterior. Or it could possibly be due to a pinched nerve in your lower back from a herniated disc or spinal stenosis. Now I've got other videos covering spinal stenosis and walking and balance problems, but in this video I want to focus on the first three causes. Your tibialis anterior is a muscle that pulls your toes up and your calves counteract it by pushing your toes down. Now if your calves are too stiff, then your tibialis anterior has to work against that internal resistance of your calves in order to lift your toes when you're walking. So the first exercise is gonna be just a simple calf stretch. In order to do this, you wanna stagger the leg that you're gonna stretch backwards and the other foot forwards. Then you wanna keep your heels on the ground of both feet and keep your toes pointed straight ahead. Then you're gonna lean forwards until you feel a stretch in the back of this calf. It's very important to make sure that you keep your heel on the floor and also that you don't allow your foot to flatten down or pronate. So stretch your calf, lean forwards, and if you do it by pushing your hips forward like this, you also get a nice stretch in your hip flexors, which is helpful if you have a spinal stenosis problem in your lower back. Now, once you've gotten in this position, try to hold this position for a minute. That is a really long time to stretch, but a gentle, long-duration stretch is going to give you much more benefit than a short, quick, hard stretch. Now, after you've held this stretch for a minute, the next step is to strengthen your tibialis anterior muscles. And I say a strengthening exercise, but it's really more a muscle endurance exercise. Because if you think about how many steps you take, your tibialis anterior doesn't have to work especially hard to lift the weight of your foot just has to do it over and over and over. And if you do notice that you're tripping over your feet, you probably notice it more after you've been walking for a while when your muscles have gotten tired. So to do this exercise, you'll lean up against a wall like this with your feet out in front of you. This makes you nice and stable. And then you just lift your toes up, hold them for a second or two, and then come back down. Lift up, hold for a second or two, and then come back down. Lift up, hold for a second or two, and then come back down. Lift up, hold for a second or two, and come back down. Now, how many repetitions of this should you do? Well, ideally, again, this is an endurance exercise. So at very minimum, you're gonna look at 15 to 20 repetitions, but ideally you're looking at 25 plus repetitions. So go until you get tired or start to feel a burn in your tibialis anterior muscles. But shoot for doing 100 repetitions, possibly broken up into several sets. Now, after you've worked on the endurance of your tibialis anterior muscles, the next thing is a learned gait habit. And this is a very common problem that causes people to trip over their toes. When you walk, your calves normally propel you and they create momentum that bends your knee and allows you to clear your toes. So if you're pushing off your toes like you should when you walk, it causes a knee bend to where you don't really even have to lift your toes up that much using your tibialis anterior. It's more the knee flexion and knee bend that helps you to swing your foot through and clear your toes. But many people, when they've gotten less certain about their balance or they're less confident in their balance, they'll tend to take slower, shorter, shuffling steps. And when you do that, you don't get the power of your calves 
to bend your knee and clear your toes. And so it does require a lot more tibialis anterior strength to lift your toes. And after you've been walking for a while and the muscle tires out, it's more likely that you'll kind of scuff your toes or possibly even trip over your own foot. So again, to walk normally, you wanna focus on pushing off of the toes of the back foot and using your back toes to power you through when you're walking instead of stepping and pulling yourself forward with the front foot. But again, there's a reason why people tend to take slower steps. That's possibly due to hip weakness or concerns with their balance or possibly due to falling because they've fallen in the past. And one really common cause of both hip weakness and tibialis anterior weakness is a pinched nerve in the lower back and particularly the L4 and the L5 nerve roots. Those nerve roots innervate both your hip and glute muscles as well as the tibialis anterior. And so if you do have spinal stenosis or another lower back problem that's pinching on those nerves, those can give you both balance and walking problems. And you can check out tips to help improve your balance and walking from spinal stenosis in these videos over here. But before you go check those out, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.